So basically we got some Chinese in here. These were shot yesterday, these two, these were shot this morning. Um, obviously what we normally do is take the front ends off um, as we're doing them, uh, so it just makes saves time. Um, the front ends we normally, if they've been shot a little bit, we tend to use them for dog meat. So this is what we've basically got, is uh, three joints, a uh, saddle and two haunches. <clears throat> we, um, we dress all our own. No, game dealer didn't have any. Um, and we have a lot of people that come to stalk them. They take a lot of game home with them. So it's all about efficiency with us. Minimum time, maximum output. So with the venison, we tend to do haunches and the saddle, or we fill it out the saddles um, for the two, two loins on the back. Basically, through just underneath the hip bone, down the side, the spine, and then to the front. And then the rest of it's just simply bone that out, peeling it off. Do you do this with all the deer? Um, yeah, basically. Um, not so much the fallow. We, we, we tend to, uh, with the fallow deer, it does tend to go to more to the game dealer, but the small, the small species with the muntjac and the Chinese, we tend to do all of this, every single one, basically. So three joint, three joints, and everything else is minced. Yeah, basically min minced, or or we uh, use it for basically raw game meat for the dogs. Your loin out there. Here's a tricky one. The other side. Why? There's nothing to hold against. Yeah, unless you're left-handed. <laughs> Coming from the opposite side. Now with these, because they're so tender, they're very, very difficult to take the silver off. And I will demonstrate, but I can guarantee it's gonna go perfect. Because <laughs> it, it is very difficult um, to get it off. There you go, there's your silver. It's all chewy. And one. I think you've done quite a good job of that. Oh, thank you. I haven't finished yet. <laughs> a bit on this side, I can feel it already. So obviously ideal scenario is to leave minimum amount of meat on the on the silver as possible. So pretty tough for that really. And there's a nice clean clean cut bit of meat. And this is the side bit. There we go. Two loins, done. Okay, so next to the haunches, two haunches on the back. With the saw you tend to get bone dust, which can go into the meat. Um, so I've got this quirky filleting, big filleting knife, which has actually been broken quite a few times by doing bits and pieces we use it for with the, with the necks and stuff. It actually works really well as a saw. So it goes down through, goes through the hate bone. Really easy. You can see it's, there's no bones there at all, and I just run it down through. A nice clean cut. Good way of getting hair off it is actually do it with a knife. See that? The knife actually picks it up better than anything else. Not that there should be any hair on it, but the way it is. Right, there's a few things to do this. Cut it off, clean it off, and use it as a whole joint. So you've got the whole leg, that's quite a nice look. Then you've got, some people like it cut here, 
So it's a shorter joint, so it looks a bit not quite so real, like a real leg. Then you can go into an actual joint, so you can cut down through the, the knee, the, because a lot of the stuff you can do without actually a saw, which is, a, which is great with a bone and out stuff. So you go back across, and basically come up behind, and then you got yourself a bit of meat there for whatever. Um, and you got yourself again, another joint, got no bone filings, nice clean, clean bit of meat. Basically, that's what I do. I normally do the haunches and fillets or saddles. Easy. But then if you get it home and you want to have it as stewing steak, you can obviously take off the, the meat. If you want to do it as steaks, you basically got to take out the hip and the pelvis. Obviously, on this object of this is obviously keeping on as much of the meat, the joint, rather than the, leaving it on the bone. Which easier said than done. The thing is actually understanding what the shape of the bone is for you to actually find it and think about it before going in almost. Yeah, and do you know what? It's um, it's great for anatom anatomy. <laughs> For when you're obviously shooting deer, it's great for me for with the kit boxes and the martial arts side of things as well because you understand bones, you understand where they are, and you know how to break them if you want to. <laughs> so, really? yeah, yeah, um, the facts, the facts. Also, how easy it is to pop a bone or pop a kneecap or something. You see that? You know, that's, that's the hip bone basically, straight at the socket. Um, you know, not leaving too much meat on there. And then you got um, the internal leg bone. This actually, that bit goes right way through, it's quite strange, you never thought it would do, but it does. Right way through, almost through to the other side. It's a really hard one to get around the back of and to make it not take out loads of meat with it. This may look a bit sort of like, uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? Rough. Rough, but, um, you know, like I say, you're not a surgeon. What's it doing round? Ta da! Oh. You got yourself a bone. Again, little bits of meat on it. You know, if you're that desperate, you can boil it up for broth. That's what I do a lot of the time with this is basically take out the best steaks. So what we're going to do with this one, we're going to, uh, we're going to basically take the first one off. So that's that. I'm going to take the second one off. Nice. Mm. Next one off, good size steaks, good thick steaks. And then we'll take the last one off. And then you've got this little bit of spare meat here, which will be stewing meat. There you go. Yeah, like I say, this is what the fillets, the two fillets that come out of the saddle. We do a lot of joints like this and like this. It saves a lot of time and effort, but we do sell quite a lot um, like this because people just do quite like the ease, the easiness of picking out the pair of fillets and, and um, straight into the oven. A lot of people take it home and do their so own bits and pieces with it like this or when you've done about three or four hundred, five hundred a year, you sort of like get used to doing it. <laughs> so David, offer me a price. <laughs> <laughs> right. Pound a pound. Pound a pound? In the fur. <laughs>